Farm Talk on CFRU 93.3 FM. Welcome to another edition of Food Farm Talk where we celebrate food and honor those who champion the cause of food in society. Welcome to another episode of Food Farm Talk on CFRU and on all our podcast platform. I am your regular host, Abdurrahim Abdullahi, and today marks the beginning of the Nutrition Month in Canada. And I have the privilege to talk to Catherine Eckert, who is a PhD student in the Applied Nutrition Program here at the University of Gulf. She's going to tell me a little bit about research and some cool a uh, project she has been working on, which will be launching sometime within uh, this nutrition month. So, Catherine, we are very happy to have you on this program. I've already said a little bit, but can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Hi, Abdul. Uh, yeah, so thanks so much for, for having me here. As you said, my name is Catherine Eckert, and I'm a registered dietitian and a PhD student in applied human nutrition. Uh, and I'm working with the Guelph Family Health Study and the Aero Food Institute at the University of Guelph. So a little bit about my background. I was born and raised in a rural community in Newfoundland, uh, and I actually completed my education on the east coast of Canada. So I did my undergraduate degree in nutrition at Acadia University, and then my master's of science in community health and epidemiology uh, at Dalhousie University. And currently I'm living in Guelph with my wife and our corgi dog. Wow. So you, you've been from one end of Canada to the other end. Quite fascinating. But I must say that looking at your background, you've been doing a lot more on health. And of course, now you are doing PhD in uh, nutrition, which is still uh, a part of health. Can you tell us a little bit about your research that you are doing here at the University of Gulf? Yeah, for sure. So my research focuses on uh, strategies or on interventions uh, to promote sustainable diets. And sustainable diets often incorporate more plant-based proteins, which are foods that contain protein that comes from plants instead of from animals. So examples of plant-based proteins that you might be familiar with are foods like nuts or seeds, tofu, quinoa, uh, or peas and beans. And plant-based proteins have been found to be associated with uh, health benefits as well as environmental benefits. Um, so there's many different factors that influence what we eat. And it could range from influences like the, you know, the cost of food to how much time we have, our kind of cooking or food skills, and the availability or accessibility of food um, in the areas that we live in. So, for example, coming from Newfoundland, there wasn't always access to like a large range of ingredients and foods that you might find in like larger city centers. So I'm interested in looking at how factors across different levels of society affect what we eat and our plant-based intake. So factors that could affect our eating, maybe more individual uh, kind of factors like food skills or our own personal tastes, or it could be broader factors that aren't always in, you know, our individual's control. So for example, influences like the food environment, say that we live in or in um, systemic food policies. That, that, that's quite interesting. Of course, sustainable diet has been on uh, the agenda in the last couple of years. And in the last few years, we've been hearing a lot about, you know, plant-based foods. And it's quite interesting to see that, like, people are really working on to, you know, bring that conversation into the food space. And then, so really, it, it will really be good to see how, like, things go in terms of moving forward. And it is interesting, which kind of ties to some of the work you are doing, because I've heard that you've been doing some very cool projects uh, aside your main research that has been trying to kind of drive the conversation around sustainable diets. And I, I, I would like us to talk a little bit about that work that you have been doing. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about your work on plant-based cookbook? I mean, I mean, generally, what is that project about? Yeah, for sure. Um, so I can give you an idea of my my own kind of research studies, as well as the, the plant-based cookbook uh, project that I've been working on over the past few years. So a few different studies that I'm working on right now. 
that I'm leading. One is looking at child's diets before and after the release of the 2019 Canada's Food Guide. Uh, so in the 2019 dietary guidelines, they made an emphasis on eating more plant-based foods. So we hope to figure out whether kids' diets have changed to align with these recommendations. And then another study I'm collaborating on is one that examines social media comments from news articles that are posted about plant-based eating. So in this study, we hope to find out what the public thinks of plant-based proteins. And really we're hoping to ultimately identify factors that may uh, you know, help or hinder plant-based eating. And then finally, the, the cookbook. So that's been a really cool project that I've been working on over the past few years. It's called Plant-Based Proteins, Recipes Made Easy Peasy. Uh, so a bit of a play on words. And this is a free online cookbook. It was created through a, a collaboration between the Guelph Family Health Study with Health Canada, the Helderly Foundation, George Brown College, the Ontario government, the Canadian Nutrition Society, and the city of Guelph. So lots of collaboration. Yeah, with there's a lot, of, a lot of people, a lot of moving past to that puzzle. That must be very fascinating to have like very different a group of entities, organizations who in their own ways, like work within that space, coming together to, you know, produce something like this. So let's, let's go yeah. to talk a little bit more about uh, that project. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so it was a really exciting collaboration and really nice to get to work with different different stakeholders. So the first section of the cookbook features more so like educational information about plant, plant-based proteins. Uh, and then in the second half of the cookbook is where we have our recipes, which includes uh, breakfast recipes, soups and salads, mains and snacks. So the overall goal of the cookbook is to introduce families to plant-based recipes that are healthy and delicious to promote healthy and sustainable eating. And I should say that not all of the recipes are solely plant-based. So some have plant foods only, and then others have meat as well. And we chose to do this because we really wanted there to be something for everyone in the cookbook. We're not advocating for uh, you know, a vegan diet. So whether you're someone who really enjoys meat or someone who eats a plant-based diet already, we wanted you, we wanted there to be something, some recipes that you would enjoy. Yeah. So kind of keeping it very realistic, like within the yeah. point we can basically say everybody should go plant-based. So exactly. to, like to see that even within the frame of talking about plant-based eating, we still have a space to incorporate, you know, animal product, products such that like people people don't feel excluded, right? So exactly. uh, talking about uh, this uh, project or about this uh, cookbook, I know there are ver- various components to it. Uh, I do know that part of it talks about sustainable diets and there's one that is more on the plant-based cookbook itself. Then we have yeah. educational tools and then we have the recipes. So let, let's start from the sustainable diets. Like what is it about sustainable diets that this project actually looks yeah, for sure. So yeah, like you said, in the in the first section of the cookbook um, is the educational information and tools. So we really wanted to provide evidence based information about about plant based proteins. So in that first section, we talk about what are plant based uh, and animal based proteins. And then we go over shopping and preparation tips for each. And then we go over the benefits of plant based eating and actually provide an ingredient showcase. Uh, So you can actually see what the different plant-based proteins and ingredients actually look like. And we also discuss ways to incorporate plant-based proteins into your diet using, you know, simple swaps and just small steps to help uh, increase your intake. So one example, I guess, is um, one tip that we discuss is if you tend to use ground beef in your recipes, like in pasta recipes or a chili, you can actually add a small amount of lentils or beans uh, to add an extra kind of boost of of nutrition and flavor uh, to your meal. Yeah, really, that's really good. So it's just about what people are already doing, but, you know, adding a twist to it by, you know, suggesting things that are plant-based elements you can actually add to it. Uh, and I yeah. know the second part is actually like the plant-based cookbook itself. Right? So yeah. let's talk a little bit about the cookbook. How different is this cookbook from like, of course, the thousands of cookbooks that we already have in existence, right? How different is this cookbook and what is special about it? Yeah, so we have, uh, you know, really great recipes from kind of breakfast and snacks, uh, mains and desserts. uh, And then in combination with the educational tools for kind of preparation and shopping tips, they kind of all uh, align and go together to kind of really uh, facilitate that process of adding more uh, plant-based proteins to your diet. So 
we're not looking at removing anything. Uh, we really want to add nutrition, add flavor, kind of add to environmental sustainability, uh, like in a broad sense. So I think that's kind of what's really unique about the cookbook. Uh, I think, you know, we don't, the recipes are not really overly complex. So they take well-known dishes and then they just really elevate them using plant-based proteins. Okay. That, that's, that's fascinating. So uh, of course, look for hearing what you are saying. So again, it, it's trying to move us a little bit away from the we versus them, right? Uh, we, yeah, the plant-based exactly. versus they, the animal-based you know, uh, based, uh, diets. Uh, so, which is good, yeah. like, the, because it's, it, I, we always say that in, in agri, there should be room for everybody, right? There should be room yeah. for people, everybody. It is not always about, I am right, you are wrong. We should find a common space where we can be able to integrate uh, th- that different diversity within that uh, space, right? Uh, exactly. So, that, that being said, I know uh, the other part of that project is, is actually the educational tool. Uh, definitely that educational tool basically will touch on some of these issues that we are talking about. Can you elaborate more on the educational aspect uh, of the project? Yeah, yeah. So um, as I said, we do, we did use evidence-based information to design all of the educational tools. So one really cool part that I think is really useful uh, is we have a table uh, with different, you know, different animal-based proteins. So we say, like, if you typically like to cook with this animal-based protein, you can add in or swap uh, part of that meal with this plant-based protein. And then we also link it in another column to recipes that it might commonly be used in. Uh, And then they link with the recipes that we present in the cookbook. So we say, for example, you can check out this recipe within the cookbook. So that's, I guess, an example of one of the the educational tools that I think is really, um, really practical for people. Wow. Probably after this program, we'll go and look for, for, for it. Uh, but we, as, as we have been discussing, we keep mentioning yeah. recipes. I don't know if it will be something of like giving away, but I was wondering <laughs> if you can tell us a little bit about, you know, some of the cool recipes that you have, you know, maybe yeah. just one or two recipes. Uh, for sure. So that we just give it uh, as a bonus to our listeners. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I can tell you maybe my, my favorite recipes <laughs> that cool. I've tried. So... I really like there's a lentil bolognese, like a pasta recipe uh, and the beef and bean burger that I, I'm really fond of. Mm. And I'll give you two more because <laughs> it's hard to pick. Um, so I really like a turkey chili as well and a shepherd's pie that uses that incorporates lentils. Wow. Uh, so I really love all of those. And as you can probably guess, I'm a big fan of like comforting and filling meals, uh, especially this time of year over the winter months. Uh, yeah. They're really cozy and healthy and delicious. Yeah. So those would probably be my favorites. <laughs> Just kind of really nice, and I, I'm sure most of our listeners will also find some very like good recipes within the cookbook. So yeah, uh, th- that being said, uh, I just want us to talk a little bit more about your general experience. You know, working on this project, coming yeah. out with this fascinating project coming out with this great uh, recipes, educational tools and, you know, educational yeah. aspect for, for people. Uh, yeah. What has your experience been in terms of just even interacting with the community of say academics or even like the general public? Because I know with projects like this, you definitely have interactions with the public to actually make inputs into it. What has been your uh, general experience uh, with the public and with like within the space, more uh, educational, you know, space in terms of coming out with this project. Yeah, so I think it's been a really great experience overall, getting to connect, you know, with different different stakeholders to create the cookbook. Uh, there's a lot of different, you know, coordination, and it was really fun to kind of work together to see different different perspectives when we were developing it. Uh, One really cool aspect was when we worked with um, George Brown College. So there's a a culinary school and they're really amazing there. Uh, So they got to kind of make their recipes in their kitchen uh, and take all the photographs by the recipes. So that was really cool. Uh, One really cool aspect. In terms of with the public, at the Guelph Family Health Study, we do have a family council. So it's uh, basically a representation of 
members of the study that we that we discuss you know different aspects of different studies and projects that we're working on to hear their feedback um, so we did uh, consult with them when, as we were developing the cookbook to say you know do you think this would be useful and practical for families uh, what do you think of this recipe uh, or this idea um, and so that was really great as well and I think one of the great advantages of consulting with people is you can hear their feedback uh, to improve your project yeah <laughs> Uh, what were the challenges uh, for you? Yeah, like yeah. Yes, what were they? <laughs> for sure. Yeah, uh, I think you know. Anytime you're part of a really big team, sometimes it's and I think you know everyone's working on probably multiple different projects. Uh, so this was over uh, a few years actually that we you know had the idea for the cookbook and uh, got to the point of actually you know developing the cookbook and the recipes and all of that. So. I would say overall, it was a really positive experience in the collaboration, but, you know, at times it can be challenging as well to, to kind of collaborate uh, on, a, on a diverse team. But, you know, ultimately in the end, I think it's, it's worth it. Wow. So th th that's really fascinating. I can, I'm just imagining, like, you know, going through all those experiences and then having to yeah. deal with that, you know, uh, diverse group of stakeholders in, in, in a project like this. Uh, I'm sure yeah. that would have been probably... Um, a very satisfying experience for you, I can imagine. So now let's try to shift GS a little bit because we are, we, we are in nutrition month, right? Not many yeah. people, of course, unless you are in the food space, are actually really aware of, of, of this. So I wanted to talk a little bit about nutrition month. Uh, what is nutrition month in a more general sense? And then we will talk a little bit about what people should expect within that month you know, from your space and from other spaces that you are aware of. So what is nutrition month? Yeah, for sure. So nutrition month really is uh, a month where we kind of focus on uh, nutrition and the role of maybe dietitians. So really about, you know, collaborating and communicating on nutrition with, with the public. So there's often different activities on the go uh, in communities. So for, for example, uh, activities for the cookbook launch, launch that we're doing uh, during Nutrition Month, we're also doing an interview about plant-based proteins in the new cookbook on the uh, Healthy Habits, Happy Homes podcast. Then that will be released on, or has been released on March 1st. Um, and you can find that podcast on the, on the Guelph Family Health Study website, as well as on Apple Podcasts. Okay. Uh, and we also have been working on articles that will be published in both French and English in the Conversation Canada in March. Yeah, so yeah, we'll look uh, out for that. yeah stay tuned for, for those pieces as well. <laughs> Lastly, you can always visit the Guelph Family Health Study website for access to any of our free online cookbooks, as well as to learn about the, the cool research that we're doing. Okay. Within the month of, of March, which is, of course, the Nutrition Month, yeah. is there something in particular you are really looking forward to? Yeah, yeah. I think, I mean, this interview was one of the, was one of the, uh, the activities that I was really looking forward to. And just kind of, I think, seeing more people become aware of the cook cookbook. I'm really hoping that we see, like, you know, a lot of downloads from, from our website. I really hope that people enjoy the cookbook. Um, so I'm really looking forward to, to hearing feedback on that. Yeah, so I think that would be what I'm looking forward to the most. Uh, so be, beyond Nutrition Month, uh, what do yeah. you generally think that we can do uh, in okay. order to, you know, co keep the momentum around, you know, sustainable diets? Yeah, yeah, I think um, that's a great question. I think you know, in our everyday lives, something that I try to do, um, you know, when I'm talking to like friends or family, uh, if, if the topic comes up, like share, share your experience. So if you do download the cookbook and you really enjoy a recipe, share it with someone. Uh, so I think that's something that kind of anyone, anyone can do. And that really helps. Uh, we're also going to be distributing re recipe cards in elementary schools, childcare centers, and libraries during Nutrition Month, so over the month, month of March. Um, and they're going to feature recipes from the plant-based cookbook that you can try at home. So if you want to share share recipe cards with family or friends, you can do that as well. <laughs> yeah, so our listeners out there, uh, they should be looking out for some kind of recipe yeah. cards uh, <laughs> with, with, yeah. within this month. Uh, so we're coming your way, uh, mostly through schools, right? Yes, yes, uh, schools, um, kind of childcare centers, and then also uh, public libraries. Public libraries. 
Okay. Yeah. Are they like all public libraries or are there specific public libraries you actually looking to? Um, that's a really great question. I'm not 100% sure on that. And I'm not sure the exact date that I'm not sure if we have a, a date set that we're going to be giving them out. But during the month of March, if you're you're in a public library in Guelph, definitely uh, keep your eye out for them. Yeah. Uh, do, you, do you have a very general message like to, to the public in terms of more like sustainable diets, right? Uh, I know you've been working in that space for some time. Uh, of course, there are always a lot of controversies when it comes to topics like this. Uh, what sure. general, general message do you have for the public uh, in around golf and even, of course, globally uh, in, in yeah. regards to sustainable diets? So I think, okay, I'll borrow a quote from Michael Pollan um, because I think he sums up the research really well uh, in his book called In Defense of Food when he says, uh, eat food, not too much, mostly plants. Um, and I know that's really general, but I think um, uh, that's really good advice. <laughs> So mostly plants, not all plants, mostly plants. Yeah, so exactly. th 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 that's important, right? So, yes, very important. Uh, and, I, and I think that that's basically one of the key themes in the work that you have been doing is uh, trying to move away from, you know, uh, the black idea of yeah. black and white, right? So kind of a mixture of black and white. From where gray, there's always a gray area, right? Exactly. I'm a big fan of the gray area. <laughs> yeah, the gray area. Yeah. I think the gray area is actually a good area where you know, most people can actually, you know, meet, you know, and, and, and form an understanding. Uh, rather than yeah. uh, each person standing in like, uh, whether in a black or in a white area, which is good. So we are basically probably running out of time. Uh, but what we'll do is I want you to kind of summarize our conversation for us. Uh, I want you to have like have a last message. Tell people uh, about uh, in maybe in one in one word, one sentence, uh, your mm. work in one sentence about uh, nutrition month in one sentence. Uh, direct people to resources about where they can actually find you know of course the the cookbook and a lot of information about the project and where how they can actually engage in conversations within the nutrition month. That's too much of an ask, but I know you can do it. <laughs> I'm not sure if it'll be quite in one sentence, but I'll, I'll do one that. sentence. Maybe one okay. sentence for each. One sentence okay. <laughs> for your project, one sentence for the uh, nutrition month, and maybe a couple of sentences to direct people to resources. Yeah, for sure. Um, so in terms of resources, you can visit the Guelph Family Health Study website uh, for access to you know our, our free online cookbooks, and you can download the cookbooks there. Uh, you can also check out the research that we're doing. And then I think uh, in terms of uh, plant-based eating and plant-based research, you know, eating plant-based foods uh, is associated with health benefits and environmental benefits. Yeah, so it, it's worth, I guess, checking out uh, the resources. And I think it's about, you know, doing uh, your best as an individual. Um, and that's going to look different for everyone. So kind of like you said, uh, living in that gray area. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I like the word that that's going to look different for everyone. Uh, yeah. Because we all have our unique uh, ways that we engage with food. And exactly. of course, uh, our conversation today has always has been centered around that unique you know, experience said so that we don't have to have uh, very isolated cases. You can make your own uh, ways in how you engage with food. Uh, yeah. If there's one thing I'm taking out of today's conversation, we probably need to encourage uh, to bring more people into the gray area between the white and the black when it comes to diets, such so exactly. that we were able to get so many people to understand that it is not always me or you, like me. Right. So it we can have that understanding. We can have an understanding in terms of uh, diet. And to our listeners uh, who are listening to us today, uh, thank you for joining us. And what we can take out of today is that plant-based diets are good in a general sense, but probably we won't say it's an exclusive way to, it's an exclusive right to eat. Like you can still eat your meat, but you can kind of incorporate plant-based uh, options into your diet. 
Am I right? Yeah, that's a uh, that's a great summary. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> and I thanks so much for having me. Okay, thank you very much, Kat, for actually thank coming you. on. Uh, we and I'm sure my, our listeners will be very happy uh, to listen to this. And if you have any further questions about this, you can always go to the resources uh, that were provided, or you can reach out to Kat as well. If you reach out to me, I'll yeah. I'll connect you to Kat. Uh, thank you very much, Kat, for, for this. Uh, thank, thank you. Thank you to our listeners again. It's been another great episode of Food Farm Talk on CFRU and on all our podcast platform. Uh, until we meet again uh, next time for another episode, thank you. Have a nice day. Thank you for listening to Food Farm Talk. See you next week for another exciting edition.